Get your leashes and treats ready because these pups will be facing off to determine who will be named top dog and who will be left in the doghouse. Welcome to the underdog. Three puppies and their owners have gathered to compete in an amateur competition that will test their skills, focus, and determination. After three rounds of performance, the dog who earns the most points by the end will be given the coveted title of the underdog. I'm your host, Katerina Balalis. And I'm your co-host, Nuri Smuller. Without further ado, let's meet our competitors. Hello, my name is Julia Davi. I am the owner of Piper. Piper is a year and almost two months old now. And we got Piper when she was a puppy. She's originally from Texas, so she had a big road trip coming up to Long Island. We had a really big fight over naming her. I think it ended up being just like my mom got the final say, even though my mom and my dad drove to get her. My mom was like, I had to sit in the car with you for that long. So we're naming the dog Piper, which we both chose for her. Piper has a very energetic personality. She's very active, loves to run around, but she's also cuddly and wants to be close to you. She's a little bit stubborn. <laughs> That's because she's spoiled, but she's a great dog. A lot of people are rooting for her. A lot of my friends have been texting me, and my family at home is rooting for her. And her uh, big sister, D.O.G., um, misses her every time she leaves without her. Piper works for the town of Avalon. She's there chasing like the geese off the lawn and stuff like that. I'm excited for Piper to learn something new. I think the agility would be is going to be very interesting for her. It's a different type of training than she's used to, but I think she'll really enjoy it. Hi, my name is Giselle Rodas and I am a sophomore criminology major from Long Island, New York. So I have my four-month-old puppy, Jack. He's pure Shih Tzu and I got him off of a seller on Craigslist. He had a litter of puppies that he was just trying to sell away for Christmas. We were going through names and one of the first names, because he's black and white, was Oreo. But my brother had spontaneously thought, oh, why don't we name him Jack? Like, especially because everyone in my fa uh, immediate family has either a J name or a J sounding name. So I'm Giselle, so there's Jack, my brother's Jacob, so you kind of get the idea. He loves to meet new people, loves to play a lot, loves to nap, he loves his naps. And he also likes to eat apples, specifically gala apples, and more specifically from Target. I bought him some from Stop and Shop a week ago and he did not like them that much. Just about everyone I know, my whole immediate family at home, like they're like, they can't wait to see what the show looks like. A lot of my teammates on M45 here at Hofstra, like a lot of them are like pretty excited. Like, and even uh, in my organization, my partner Lori, she's like, like so excited, like she can't wait to see the show. So being that Jack's only about like four months old right now, I'm really excited to see how his behavior and his house training will improve throughout um, the show. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm 18. I'm a bioengineering major and my dog is Brooklyn. So me and my dad kind of decided to get a dog while my mom was away. She's always against the idea. We decided to get a big dog like a husky. So we chose Brooklyn and we drove him all the way here from Pennsylvania. He was very husky the first few days, but after a while with Brooklyn, she really opened up and she really loves him now. Well, Brooklyn is very energetic and dramatic. He loves to sing. His favorite food is cheese. He loves cheese and like he also eats the little Starbucks cup, the puppetini makings, he loves those. He just gets to watch and play like any other guy. He's just like this way of sunshine all the time. Like we can I come home and I'm like tired but he's always like so happy to see anybody. He's excited all of energy so it's so great to have that, that feeling in the house. My I had Griffin join because he's very untrained and doesn't really do much obedience. So I really hope that all these training sessions will really make him focus and just act better in general and follow directions as well. Before our fearless competitors are ready for the final competition, they're going to need a little bit of help from the professionals. We're here at Martial Arts where three dog trainers are ready to help bring our furry friends up to snuff for the big day. Julia Davi. This is my dog Piper. She's an English Springer Spaniel and she's a year and about two months old now. 
Today we're going to teach you Piper, who's destroying a toy at the moment, uh, how to sit, stay, and wait for a recall. So, first, you just go Now, because I'm using a toy, I'm going to go super slow and bring it up above her head. Hop! Now, she knows it by the word of hop. Now, you're going to recall her to me and play a little game of chop. Piper, hop! Yes! So, I want to praise her when she gets to me and when she gets all the way to me. If I don't reward her when she's at the spot right in front of me, she might think that she can come halfway and then go somewhere else. Let's do a trick. I'm thinking through the legs. We'll call it in between. We work on our sit stay as well as a little bit of an in between, which is actually where you take the dog and you train them to go in between your legs. So I put it right out in front of her, and as she goes for it, yes, good girl. I can let her have it at the highest point of excitement. Between, good. So I say it right as she's about to do it. Try to set her up behind you and make it really clear and obvious. She is already on to agility, past obedience, so um, I think she's doing very well. Yay! Yay! Oh, you had it. You took two steps. Going into this training session today, it's not what I expected. I expected it to be a little bit more difficult for her, but she seemed to just get everything pretty much after a few attempts, so I'm pretty proud of her. Piper stacks up really well against the other competitors. I think this is right up her alley, and I think she's going to really excel. And I think we can't wait for the final competition. She's going to be a champion, absolutely. She's going to win. Um, definitely going super slow, making sure she's successful, and having a lot of fun. Dogs love having fun. It's all a game to them. So if we can make it fun, we can make it a game. I think she's going to be great. Jack, he is a four-month-old Shih Tzu puppy. Um, he was born November um, in a litter of four, and he's learning positive reinforcements. The first thing that you see me doing is taking a treat, bringing it over to his nose, and luring it so that he gets up onto this place. When he gets up, I'm on a safe place, and then I take the treat, I pull it up, and when I pull the treat up, the butt goes down. I want to say the word as he does it. We are building a positive association between a word and an action. So as he does the behavior, sit, I say the word sit. He is a typical puppy. We're dealing with a lot of impulse control. He just wants to have fun. And I think the most challenging part about uh, working with him is just making sure that the owner understands, you know, how to really uh, communicate with the dog properly in order to get what she wants. The way we teach stay is we don't say the word stay. We don't say the word stay because it, to us, is redundant. If I put him into a sit, he should be sitting in sit. I'm gonna place him up on his equipment. There he is. 
then as I put him into a sit, I build my duration by giving him a treat every couple of seconds. If he breaks the behavior, I put him back into a sit. sit. Instead of taking my treats and trying to get him to do it over and over and over again, because now that was three times that he failed, I'm gonna take a different motivator. I'm gonna use a toy. I'm gonna put him in his sit. <laughs> and so I show him that by waiting in a sit position, he now gets to play. I honestly, when I try to teach him tricks, I did exactly what she said like not to do. So like overusing the word sit and whatnot. But like definitely it was really insightful and she was really nice and I know Jack really liked her. We might want to be a little bit more fun, maybe get down on the floor. Good! So let's actually segue into some agility now. We never force the dogs onto equipment. You're never going to want to see us drag him by the leash. If he wants the candy cane, he's got to go up and over the jump. Again, I'm not putting a word to it. I assume he doesn't know it. So I try to, try to get him to build value. And in this case, I, woo, jump, good boy. Use this hand and pretend like you're bowling him in. So this hand, nope, that has your treat hand, yep. And this, you're just going to open palm and roll him through as we go in that direction. So, take your thigh, kind of go straight onto the other side. Jump, good job. That's yes, okay, we'll try it again. I honestly didn't think he was gonna come like, go through it, especially when we like um, expanded it at its full length. But like um, through all like the little previous like baby steps we did with the positive reinforcement, like he got it. So I was pretty um, pretty surprised and like happy with that. I would say his biggest takeaway was the duration. That's where I feel most proud of for a dog like Jack. Being that we got him like as a newborn, like it's a little easier to get him trained and whatnot. So I think he's actually doing pretty well. the training center and I thought it would be a good idea to bring him because he has all this energy that he doesn't put into good use and I feel like he can use that energy into obedience so and agility. So we might actually just do some, um, a little bit of the agility equipment first because Brooklyn's having trouble focusing. So let's actually just bring him over to our equipment. Ashley, you're going to go on the other side. I'm super excited. I want you to call him, okay? And then once he jumps over, I want you to say jump. Jump! Yes! Good boy! So Brooklyn's not really taking treats right now, and he's not really playing with his toys. So at the very least, I'm giving him praise as a reward. And also his mom. <laughs> you found a set. His biggest struggles are trying to get his attention and focusing on anything. He doesn't really have any sort of treats he likes or toys, so it's really hard to get his attention. doing the action, that's when you say the word that you want to attach the action to. So every time he does the tunnel, we say tunnel. So when my trainer tells me tunnel, I should go through it. Tunnel. Good. Good boy. So now I'm going to have you do jump with me. <laughs> Even though this isn't the obedience that we're used to, like sit down, stand, agility is still obedience. We're not just running through, it's not the dog running through the course. It's 
actually the dog has to listen to the trainer and not just him doing whatever he wants. He's also getting tired. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Get this dog some water. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> A little victory hop. Huh? We're gonna try tunnel and two jump. So I'll do with Brooklyn first. explained everything and was really good at getting Brooklyn's attention, which made him apply himself into the training more. more agile and he has more energy but he's not as trained as the other two as well so um, he's kind of below them at the moment so yeah. Brooklyn has a lot of potential it's just how can we get him to use all that energy to actually get him to work. It's only natural to care for each other. Maturo. It's only natural. So, last week we worked on the agility and a little bit of obedience. Have you been working on it? Not really. Okay, so what have you been focused on with the obedience? A um, lot of like sit, stay, wait for her to get the toy, and then go get it. Okay, how is our recall? Recall, not a strong. Okay, so today we need to work on recall and then we'll do more agility. So, how we're gonna do recall. Today, I have a long line and I have it all fancy wrapped up. But let's get Piper over here and we're gonna attach this to her. Okay, so now we have that clipped on her. I know she's a off-leash dog for the most part. So, we're gonna kinda let this dangle behind her. But the really important part is, we need to reward her for being in front of us. If she recalls and then kinda veers off to the side, it doesn't really count. So when we say her name, we get her attention, and then we say our recall command. What is her recall command? Heal. Heal, okay. I'm gonna start when she's nice and calm. Piper, come, heal. Yes, good, get it. Ready to give it a shot? Piper has improved. Um, we need a little bit more work with obedience stuff just so agility gets easier, but she's doing great. Good, yes, wonderful. All right, now we're going a little bit further. I think she's got it. Drop it. Ready? Set, go. Good, now play. Good. So we want to be really, really strict about where she's going to be. If she's in the right spot, we can reward her for being in that right spot. If she's not there, then she shouldn't get a reward technically. But that's perfect. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, let's do some agility. Don't do it. There we go. Oh. It did take a little while to get her used to the tunnel again. She needed to freshen up on it. But once you started going through it, it was it was easy. Yay! Huge party. Yeah. Use your empty hand to guide her. Good. Good. Although it worked, it was backwards. And so if we have the toy in the right hand, we want to use the left hand. Okay. And so think about bowling. So I'll demonstrate on this side. So if I'm coming this way, and let's say I was a professional bowler, I'd come on up. Boom, like that. Now we don't do the leg thing, but it's the same premise. Boom, bowling, and then we go. If we're like this, it's kind of confusing. So we need to build in value. The way we do that is with treats, with toys, just making it more fun yes. and engaging than anything else in the world. Perfect. Just waiting for the toy. Oh boy, lots to go, bro. Okay. 
So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through. You're gonna come over the jump. So you're gonna go this way, boom, jump, back around, swipe hands to the right, and then go through. <laughs> Yes! Beautiful! It's really great working with the trainer. Mike is amazing. It's definitely different. I've never really worked with a trainer with any of my dogs. So it's a different type of experience. It's very helpful though. Now I want to do this. We're going to do that recall that we did last week, where she's going to sit. You're going to come over here. You're going to say tunnel. She's going to come out. Hopefully jump back tunnel. So if you can stay in this one spot, she did it perfectly right. Good. Good. Yes! Oh, look at that! Beautiful, beautiful. I want to end there, I always want to end on success. I think it's just kind of keep going, keep going, keep going. Making her do something a little bit more difficult each time is just the way to go for her, but she's been doing great. I'm really proud of her. It'll be, it's a fun competition, but it is also serious. We are gonna win. Jack is awesome. He was awesome when we first met him. Um, I love his motivation. He actually did really, really well today. Jack, I say his name, I give him a treat. If I say your name, I give you a $100 bill, you're gonna wanna look towards me every single time. So we condition the response for him to look at us when we say, Jack, that's what I want. Very nice. Jack. Good. Jack. Good. One of our goals is to be able to work with him around a distractive environment. In this case, there's gonna be another dog passing by. Based upon our philosophy, we're gonna to try to not say as much to him because we don't wanna lose value in the things that we say. I've actually um, been having tr trouble like training Jack just because like his attention span is pretty low and um, he gets distracted really easily. He's very like energetic. I give him a treat, I don't say anything. Hopefully he sees. Yay, Jack! Good boy, you're good. You're good, right? So, Jack! Yay! But here, he made a couple of decisions. It's, I wanna go say hi to the other dog. I wanna, I wanna go over and you know check what's going on and investigate, but someone's calling my name. Now let's actually try to put him into a sit and just build a little bit more duration with the sit. We're making it clear to him that when you want treats, you just sit there and wait for them. Treat now. Good. So let's go over to our tunnel. And do you remember the comparison? Yeah. Good. We want to pretend like we are bowling, it. bowling him. Very nice. Great job. Okay, so use the hand that's closest to him, pretend you're bowling, and then I want you to call him on the other side. Okay, now when he is being a little bit um, nervous of it, that's okay. Remember, we're not trying to force him into it. So let's come on this side. Okay, so right here, you're gonna take your hand and stick it through the tunnel on the other side, from the other side. Wow, there you go. I was actually pretty amazed like how quickly he was able to go through the tunnel like on his own, especially when um, she let go of the leash and he just like uh, willingly did it like on his own. Tunnel. Yay, great job. Yay, great job. We're gonna extend it out yet again with him in it, of course. But this is the positive association that we want, right? I want to do the agility. I want to be in the tunnel. That's the motivation. That's when you know we're doing it right. Tunnel. Yes! Very nice. Wow, Jack, Jack, that's not so bad, is it? Let's head on over to the jumps. And like the tunnel, we're bowling it through. So that means if you are on whatever side, your hand that's closest to him is saying, jump, jump. We keep the jumps a little lower for puppies just because it's better. Their growth plates haven't closed yet. Um, and so we don't want too much tension on the joints when they do high uh, jumps with a lot of impact. Ready? Jump. Yay! Tunnel. 
Yes! That was awesome! Tunnel. Good, bring it over to his nose. Yay! Great job! I really like how he's doing, like I will say that. Like I'm really impressed like how he did today. Jack loves food, so I think using the treats as a training method is a little bit easier on my end, or he's just a fantastic dog. How would you say, Brooklyn, how well does he know his name? Like on a scale of one to 10? I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? <laughs> I've been doing recall and agility, tra agility training, and also name calling. So I think it's really getting his attention more and like he's being more focused on the activity he's doing than the surroundings. Even though he's still very distracted, he's kind of putting the effort there. So name recognition is just attention. So when I say his name, I want him to look at me. So right now, he's very invested in what he's doing. So he's sniffing the sandbag, he's really going to town. A lot of it is just waiting. Right now he's sniffing, I'm waiting. Brooklyn. Yes, good boy. Oh, oh you like the cheese -ums. Ooh, delicious. So that was really good. And actually, I think I'll have you try. I'll give you back the cheese. Brooklyn. Oh, good. That was really good. So dogs don't really know, at first, they don't know their name. They don't know what the concept of a name is but we can teach them that if they respond to certain sounds in the form of their name, and they get a reward, then they build more value yeah, upon good. that name. So when you're at home, I want you to practice more name recognition. And also, <laughs> <laughs> did you take it? Did you spit it out? Aw, buddy. Yeah. So one thing I would say is, I'm not specifically training Brooklyn. I'm training Ashley. Brooklyn's only here for 30 minutes. I really want to make sure that Ashley knows what to do because even though I can work really well with Brooklyn here, I don't go home with Brooklyn. I don't spend time with him. I don't know what he's like outside of here. The jump. jump. Nice. <laughs> that was a really long jump. <laughs> Come on. And the hardest part about Brooklyn is that it's hard finding a motivator for him, especially in a new environment. So especially here, when there's a lot of smells, he may not be concerned about taking treats or toys, but he seems to work best when things are exciting. Call him. He's taking a tunnel with him. <laughs> lots of praise, lots of praise, and talk to him. Get super happy. You should go boy, yeah. You should go to boy, yeah, yeah. He has this very good insight on how to like keep dogs focused and like on their activities, and like you have to really wait out to like get a good reaction out of the dog. <laughs> Every time he comes out of tunnel, it's a big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Too much of a party. He's <laughs> gonna be more willing to do the things we want him to do. Going forward, we're gonna try to like find something that he really looks forward to. And when he does something really hard, like all these agility training, and definitely just him trying to focus on something, getting his attention, is like main priority for anything at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's so excited. And your hair is flying everywhere. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Come on. Yes. Tunnel. Good boy. There you go. Good. Very nice, and you can see he's getting more comfortable jumping over the jump, doing the tunnel. All right, ready? <gasps> yeah! I'm really proud of Brooklyn for today, and um, next week I can only expect more. <laughs> Priority, like name calling, because if I can get him to like really respond to his name, he could really focus on anything that's grasping his attention, and the recall would be nice as well. Oh my goodness, he's a happy man. This is no ordinary puppy. He's a canine companions for independence assistance dog in the making. Born, raised, and trained to give independence to a person with a disability. Learn how you can give independence and give a dog a job at cci.org.
Today is the final day of training. We're just kind of working on finishing up training for the big competition. So today's goal, we gotta sharpen up our tricks. Mm -hmm. We gotta start making sure that Piper is doing the behavior, not just for the toy or the board, but for the Yes. Okay. So let's start off with our trick. So remember, right? We bring her around, and then we bring her through the middle, and then when she gets here, good. I'm gonna give her praise because you have the toy. Yeah. yeah. The important part about getting her to work for us as opposed to the toy is we don't want her to know we have the toy until she's done the behavior. Yeah. She's already learned her behavior. Now it's about training and All right, so I went into it thinking, okay, let's eliminate the amount of toys. Get her to do the behavior that she knows how to do and then surprise her with the toy. So it's kind of like asking somebody to do something and then giving them $20 and say, thank you, as opposed to being like, hey, I have $20, can you help me do this? Good job. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, during the training today, we worked um, on her trick peekaboo, which is when she goes through her legs. She's a little stubborn without her toys, so that's what we're going to work at at home. Right there. Yep. Just try to recall her into the middle. Piper! Sword behind you. That's perfect. Piper, yeah! Ah! Close! Piper! <laughs> Piper wasn't too into the behavior today. She wanted to do some other things, so we used the toys to lure her around and they're gonna work on getting those toys away over the next couple of days. Ready? Nope. No, stop cheating. Come on. Yes, good. Mm -hmm. okay. good we'll end on that for a second. We'll give her a mental breather. It's important to end stop on success it. and then that kind of sticks in their brain. So when you're practicing at home, make sure it ends on success. She gets to do something good, maybe relax for a little bit, and then we'll come back. Okay. So, agility-wise, we have a couple jumps. First exercise I want to do, actually practicing on our directions. You're going to stand here. It's going to be right next to you. Mm -hmm. And whichever one you point at is the one she's going to jump over. Okay. And then we're just going to recall her back. So, right? Jump! Agility is just obedience in motion, right? So if you say go, she's got to go. Her. You recall her back, she's got to recall. We know she can do those things. And we know she can do it over the equipment. Now it's just, can she do it when we ask her to do it? So right hand's empty, left hand's toy. Jump, come around, swap the toy. Left hand now over this jump. Come back this way, swap the toy. Right hand going all the way to here. Come out there. Hop. Ready? Piper, jump. Yes, good. Good. Jump. Yes. We went the wrong way. <laughs> Tunnel. Yes. Yes. Piper heel. Hop. Ready? Jump. Yeah. Jump. Woo. No. Tunnel. Tunnel. And we'll end there. That was really, really good. Victory Always, tunnel. always, always end on success. She absolutely deserves to be the underdog. I think she came in here really shy and she's really um, progressed. Obviously haven't been seeing how the other dogs have been doing, but I think she's been doing really, really great. And I'm really proud of her right now. Oh, she's gonna win. It's gonna happen. We're champions. We're bringing it home. We're bringing home the trophy, the million dollars, whatever it is. We're bringing it home. As long as they can practice and keep the motivation going, I think she's going to go into it with her head held high and she's going to leave with her head held high. Good luck. I think she's got it. It'll be good. So we're back at Martial Arts. If I'm not mistaken, this is the last training session, which is pretty sad. I didn't realize till today that it was the last one. And then I'm kind of upset because like I really enjoy watching him like go through the agility courses and whatnot. Today I went over a lot of paw with him. That's what the owner Giselle was saying his biggest struggles were at home. I can't expect him to give me his paw because he hasn't quite learned it yet. <laughs> now this is awesome yeah, he does that. because he's going down a list of things that he already knows mm -hmm. thinking that that's what we're asking for. He is giving me a couple different, <laughs> different He does that very often. He's so stinking <laughs> cute. Ah. So I'm going to offer my hand here and the moment he gives me his paw, <gasps> yay! I give him a treat. I'm just waiting for him to continue offering behavior. 
but you did also notice that he hasn't been spinning around or rolling over right. because that hasn't worked. Jack, sit. Good job. Then you're gonna hold out your hand. It's hard because he's uh, he's really energetic and he'll, he lets that get the best of him, but he's been doing a lot better in terms of um, trying to actually cooperate. When we are having trouble getting his attention, save your breath, keep the value in your voice. I didn't say anything to him. I kind of just stood up and he gave me what I wanted. Tap, tap, tap. Yay! Jack, come here. For name recognition, right? Got it. Come here. Come here. All right. Sit. Good job. Okay. Would it be okay if I switched feet? Like, I mean, pause. I would take whichever paw you seem, you feel like he's not digging out. A way you can actually tell is when you look at their paw pads mm -hmm. or nails, right? Yeah. The more spread out it is, the more weight they're bearing. Oh, okay. So if it's super, super tight, then you know there's not a lot of weight on it. So here, there, you're gonna get this one. Okay. Come here. All right, sit. All right, good job. This one. No, no. We're going back to motivation. Is the kibble enough? Probably not right now. No. Is mom enough? Probably not right now. But we're gonna take out. Bum, bum, bum. So the great part about a toy reward is that the reward lasts as long as you want it to. Pa, get it, get it, get it, get it. So I want him to do something for it first, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's gotta do a sit, sit. and a paw and then he gets to play. He had a lot of fun. I think that Giselle had a great line of communication with him. As long as he knows what you're asking of him, he does great. Let's actually move on to our agility. Ooh. Come here, come on. Yay. Nice job. Nice job. Okay, here we go. Jack, come here. Come here. I don't understand. Jack, I'm here. Yes, come here. Come here. Yay. Okay. Hello. Oh, Yay! Was... All yeah. right. Come here. Come on. This way. Good job. Are you ready? Okay. Oh, he did. Almost. <laughs> oh, wait. Where did he go? Oh. He brought a smell. Okay. Tell him. Tell him. Good job. Amazing. Good job. Nope. Being five months, he already gave us way more than he did coming in. And I do think that he should be the winner because despite some focus, he was a champ with the agility. So the confidence that he has, Giselle's, you know, desire to do the homework at home, like she, they're, they're both such a great pair. We are at the training place and we are practicing once again agility and recall and sit. <laughs> It's like, I want the whole thing. Sit, good boy, good. So actually, what you just did there was called boring. So when we do it with treats, he doesn't want his treats. So we get him <laughs> to lure him into a sit. We want to bring the cheese to his face, bring it upward, and that shifts the weight from his head to his butt. So that's how we got him into a sit. So once he did it, we said the word sit, and then we gave him the cheese as a reward. So let's try it again. <laughs> no. He did want to take the cheese, and I did specifically tell Ashley to um, refrain from giving him breakfast in the morning. So he was more motivated to take the food today. Try having... <laughs> right, having a little piece, so not the whole thing. He's unmotivated with the little piece. <laughs> motivated for the whole stick of cheese. I'm the same way, Brooklyn. Try having it not too hot. Keep it really low. A dog like Brooklyn, who's just anxious being in new places and just sensory overload with all these smells, um, that kind of that kind of triumphs over wanting to eat a lot more. So a lot of it is just confidence building and teaching a dog how to do new things in an environment they're not really comfortable with is um, the hardest part for a dog. So what I'm doing a muscle glory and it with my other hand. So, Brooklyn. 
with the agility, he's definitely really good at it. Like, that's the one thing I really think he, he really focuses on and have fun with, especially like the jumps. The tunnel is a bit iffy sometimes because he smells it a lot and pees on it a lot, but uh, he still gets through it. Oh my oh, gosh. Why do you do that? <laughs> There's nothing we can do right away that will fix just getting him comfortable with new environments right away, but just overall um, long term is just taking him out to more places. Keeping Brooklyn a little more hungry, is, I feel like it's going to be a good key um, and lots of praise, obviously, as he's really expressive on how much he loves the rough play and doing something. He's very expressive on how proud he is of himself. So I would say praise is definitely our number one motivator for right now. Oh my god. <laughs> He's improved a lot since the first day. He's definitely like uh, taking more commands and doing the agility faster than before. And as for like like recall and sitting, he's definitely doing it more than he used to. And now he's like, since he's gotten used to the place being a couple of times here, I think he actually focuses okay. a bit more yeah. now. Come here. I think I'm just gonna focus on recall again because it's the thing that he's really good at at home, I guess. Uh, name calling, he's kind of still iffy on that. Maybe it's just him or he's just distracted, but I just think name calling, we have to focus on it more as well. And agility, he's just really good at it. So I think just really just those two things. <laughs> Brooklyn actually did fantastic today. He was doing the agility just by himself. Um, it was mostly just him just jumping over the obstacles, going through the tunnel. It was pretty amazing just to have him do it by himself and that we're not just dragging him into the obstacle. So you just got to keep doing it enough because dogs, they don't understand what any words mean. <laughs> So they just associate, they just know that the words are associated with behavior. He works hard and he's really focusing here. And I guess if he just tries to take that same energy into the studio, I think he he deserves to him because he really like, does, like tries really hard on these things and tries to focus and is happy doing these things too, so. With their month of training now over, it's finally time for our favorite pooches to put their skills to the test. The underdog competition consists of three rounds, the sit and stay round, the basic command round, and the agility course round. After each competitor performs, the judges will award them a score between 1 and 10, and the competitor with the highest combined total will win the title of the underdog. But before we jump into the first round, let's meet our wonderful panel of judges. Our first guest is Veronica Grzbowska, head of training for the Southampton Animal Shelter Foundation in Southampton, New York. Our second guest is Lauren Brusese, puppy program manager for the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind in Smithtown, New York. And finally, our final guest is Laura Leonard, owner of Best Friends Pet Services from Massachusetts. Uh, my name is Veronica Grzbowska. Uh, I work at Southampton Animal Shelter Foundation. I'm a head of a training department there. You know, I work closely with a whole uh, group of trainers and we try to find the best match for every pup that comes in the shelter. I would tell every dog owner that, um, you know, they should really teach their dog how to relax and how to let go and how to calm down. Especially puppies, they can go and go and go forever, right? And um, they can be excited and, and happy, but really what, what they need is to know how to calm down at that moment and just, and just relax before a training session. My name is Lauren Bruzzese, and I work at the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind. What we're doing in the puppy program at an organization like ours is really focusing on socialization and basic skills and foundational learning for young puppies who are on their way to becoming guide dogs. So we are hoping to maybe get some Hofstra students interested in puppy raising. Puppy raising as a whole is incredibly rewarding. It's a great experience if you are interested in dog handling or pet obedience and any kind of field that pertains to companion animal care. So we'd love to see some interest from students on campus and get, get rolling with maybe a group here. Understanding what that particular dog values and finds rewarding is really important to success and their enjoyment what they're actually enjoying and what they'd like to earn and continue to earn and that will usually lead to a really good bond and some really good success with dog training. 
hi, um, my name is Laura Leonard and I am the owner of Best Friend Pet Services. It's a dog walking, dog sitting, boarding, pretty much anything that people need when they're not home to care for their own pets. The, it is a hard job to deal with all different kinds of dogs, so it's nice to see all the, the ways that they're trying to work around training their own pups. Beforehand, I would say just spend, try to spend as much time as possible with your pet. What really helps I feel with training is to let the dog play for a little bit, get its energy out, and then really settle in and try to get them to pay attention, you know, straight on with you. And, um, and then a lot of praise, a lot of praise. I think that the lessons that they learned from the trainers will stay with them. It's not something that they'll forget and maybe they'll continue with even more advanced training. This first challenge will test each dog's ability to listen to their owner by having them sit and stay in place as their owner steps away. First up for round one, we have Julia and Piper. Piper is doing a great job, Marie, if you say to myself. Yep. Yeah. Hop. This is definitely one of her strengths. Definitely recall with Julia. Well, she was already a strong competitor right from the beginning. I mean, she already knew how to sit and yeah. stay before she even joined Hop. the competition. So that's definitely a plus for her. Good job, kid. Distraction has definitely always been a huge problem for her. Um, little tiny squeaks and stuff like that really draw her attention away from me, which is an issue. But she's been doing all right. She's very, very excited today, so she's very motivated. She did what she was supposed to do, so I mean, that's all I could ask from her, but yeah. All right, that was Julia and Piper, and now up next we have Giselle and Jack. Are they ready? So in the sit and stay round, okay. Jack is definitely it's a been? strong competitor. Right, sit. As we see, Sit is definitely Good one job. of his strong suits. Good he job. is a little tangled up though Good right now job. on the leash, so hopefully we can get him out of that quickly. Oh, well, that's just to explain his excitement. <laughs> <laughs> right, come here. All right, stay. We can Good definitely job. see that his energy is, a, is at a peak right now. Yeah. Well, he's even got his paw up. <laughs> Let's hope it stays that way for the agility round come Yay. round three. Definitely. Right. Come here, Jack. All right. All right, come here. All right, sit. Good the job. Recall. This is absolutely Looking spectacular. Yeah. It's like he's been doing this for <gasps> yeah, years. He's, he's not even won job. yet. <laughs> I think it did pretty well. Um, I didn't like. I got. I guess you could say I got confused with staying versus sitting. Because what I did was to kind of practice sitting. Was I went across the the floor mat. That way, like, I can call him over and then I can get him to sit. Overall, I think he did pretty well. Um, he's pretty good with, like, sitting and stuff and waiting for his treat. My only concern would be that he'd just probably get too tired by the end, but I'm hoping that he actually can keep his energy through. That's why I'm trying to, like, not give him way too many treats and, like, overly reinforce the command that he's doing. That way he knows he has to put in the work before he can get it. All right, so that was Giselle and Jack, and now we'll be moving on to Ashley in Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn, Brooklyn, look, look, <laughs> sit, <laughs> no, you're so close, come on, Brooklyn, hey, Brooklyn, Ashley is definitely trying to get a hold of Brooklyn right now, but he seems very, very held up with just sniffing the mat. He, that is one of his biggest weaknesses, okay. is distraction Nothing. and having a low attention span. So no. she is doing Never a good get... job, however, though, trying to reel him in. It is a very new environment for him, for sure. Definitely, he's trying to feel out Look. everything. <laughs> good at holding the hand. There, there he go. goes. And there's that beautiful sit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> looks like he's not too much of a fan of those treats. But Brooklyn. he is doing a rather decent job right now. Look. Look, there, there he goes go. again, sitting. So he's not, I think he just had to feel out the <laughs> so area a little bit more. Brooklyn, look, sit. <laughs> there we go. He did the sit. Um, I'm not sure if he did the stay. I wasn't, I wasn't sure how they characterized the stay, so I'm definitely did it. He told him to be good. I'm kind of proud of that because like, we didn't practice that very much. 
but he proceeds to kind of like in one of these guys. And the trees are? Uh, animal factor. I'm hoping the basic commands, like, come, will come easy with him. And the ability, I just hope he remembers it, because it's necessary that he can apply the same skills he could. All right, that was Ashley in Brooklyn, and that was also the end of round one. We're now going to head on over to the judges for deliberation. Should we start with Piper and Julia? Yes. Sure. I really liked how calm they were. Both Agreed. of them, they were really calm and they were just, you know, relaxed and happy to be together. Yeah, I think Julia's tone was really nice too. She kept using a nice kind of happy, upbeat tone and I think that was really helpful with keeping Piper engaged because it's a pretty exciting environment. Yeah, I would like to see, um, I would like to see Julia maybe v verbally praising more. Yeah, it could have been helpful for her to kind of in between keep the momentum up and keep engagement by using her voice, definitely. Right, because what if you do run out of treats? <laughs> <That's> very true. <laughs> that sometimes happens. Yeah. But I mean, I think Piper is the kind of dog who's like wants to please. A little pup. Oh, Jack. Jack. Oh my goodness, so, so cute. cute. So cute. cute. They're all cute. So I know. much fluff. His response to the sick was super, super quick. Um, that was really solid. Uh, I didn't clearly see a stay behavior, so that was the main but thing that I had spins. noted. There were spins. Yes, there were lots instead. of spins. I know. <laughs> It was, it was impressive though for a young puppy. I mean, mm -hmm. he was focused and I think she did a good job keeping that focus. Brooklyn, I think that Ashley is just a little too quiet and timid for outgoing Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she especially, you know, sometimes dogs aren't going to be super interested in a treat if it's mm -hmm. not of value. So I think that was a little bit of Brooklyn's kryptonite there. Still a really beautiful High sit once she was yeah. able to get him focused. So. Yeah. yeah. It, when it yeah. started, I was, you know, sad that it actually ended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because once he focused, uh -huh. that, you know, that could last Keep longer. Going. But yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that was very enjoyable. I cannot yep. wait. I cannot yeah. wait to see <laughs> round two. So cute. All right, it's time to move on to our second challenge, the basic command. Each owner and pup practice different commands to perform based on their training sessions and prior ability. They'll perform their command for the judges and will receive their scores at the end. Now we are moving on to round two. First up, we have Julia and Piper. Okay, you ready? Go. peek -a -boo. Good job. Piper Pick definitely has a hold on those basic commands. Just like I mentioned in the previous round, she already knew a lot of these commands already, so Hup. it's not surprising that she's doing a great job in both rounds. I think Piper's excitement is just leaving her just a tad distracted, Pick but she seems to be Good doing job. great in this round. Yeah. At least she's not running into our crew members. <laughs> of course. Ready? Come here. Pick a boo. Good job. Good job, Peeves. With this trick, um, she's progressed a lot. At first, she wasn't really getting it. She was very confused, but now she's actually doing it really fast. We've been practicing it a lot, so it showed today. I think Piper has a great chance of winning. Um, obviously, there's still agility left. She has been working really hard. I'm really proud of her. So if she doesn't win, I'm gonna be happy anyway. She has done so much and she's been amazing, but I really hope she does win. All right, that was Julia and Piper with Peekaboo. Now let's see what Giselle and Jack have in store. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, you ready? Okay. All right, roll over, Jack. Roll over, Jack. Come on. You can do it. He definitely has the spins for us today. Right, come on. He's having over. a little bit of trouble. Good oh, there job. we go. There we That's go. That's boy. Good job. That puppy excitement is surely aiding yes. him tonight. <laughs> Seems as though he's yeah. very intrigued with the yeah. treats. Of course. Yep. Doing whatever yeah, he can, not job. necessarily doing the correct command, but he's getting to it. He's getting to it. Okay. He's got that tail wagging too. Mm -hmm. Very okay. happy puppy Come for on. sure. Nope. Oh, he snatched it out. At this point, I think he's just in it for the treats. Oh, same. <laughs> Roll over, Jack. There's that spin Good and there's job. that rollover. There, there you go. Look at you. 
I just finished phase one of round two, so I was doing um, the command that I've been practicing with Jack, which for him is rolling over. He's actually, that's the one that he actually has, like, I would say hands down. So, like, he'll kind of be waiting for me. Like, when he sees that I come home, he, like, starts racing to the kitchen where his treat jar is. Um, and then sometimes he's so excited that he'll start rolling over without even me giving the treat yet. Like, that, like that's how, like, good he has it. I think it just depends on, like, the circumstances. I think when he sees, like, a lot of people, he wants to go play with other people. I mean, he's only five months, but I think, like, because of how much training he's already gotten and being how young he is, I feel like like maybe after one try, he'll definitely get it. That was Giselle and Jack with the wonderful rollover command. Let's see what Ashley and Brooklyn have in store for us next. Looks like Brooklyn's still getting a little bit used to his surroundings. I think that's gonna be the issue every time he Brooklyn. comes back in the room. Brooklyn. Hey, come here. There is the attention. Mm -hmm. I think he's kind of just parading around for everyone <laughs> in here today. Brooklyn. He's definitely more interested in checking out the entirety hey, of Studio here. A. Oh, of come course. Here. Yeah. There he yeah. is. And there's the phrase from Ashley. <laughs> oh. No. It's like that bark is extra reassurance that he's like, Mom, I'm sitting. <laughs> Stay there. He's gotten very good no. at following Ashley as well. <laughs> I'm here. Ah, oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, we did come and he did it, so it's more like me opening my arms and him coming with like a sound. We also did one off leads, which is pretty nice. I think he did pretty well. Something when he, I say the command, he looks at me, and it doesn't do it sometimes, but he looks at me. He's really a nice and pretty much like he sees me and acknowledges me, which is the first step to it. But um, sometimes he actually doesn't look at me, and it's very nice to see him do it. So I guess he really picked up on me and just paying attention in general. I really hope he does it. Uh, I feel like he might have a possibility when he can. All right, that was Ashley in Brooklyn with name recall. Now let's head on over to the judges for round two deliberation. Jordan Piper, peekaboo. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I wasn't either. I thought that was really unique. I thought it was cute. I think it's a nice kind of active skill too because Piper is a pretty active pup. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be neat if Julia, you know, expands on the peekaboo, and then they can do like a little dance together. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's very yeah, true. Exactly. You know? it, I think the two of them work very well together. Jack. We should call him Spinning Jack. <laughs> Spinning Jack. So I wasn't oh, sure if it was supposed to be both skills or if she wanted to focus on the roll over. I think maybe because he's really strong with spin, she likes to throw that in, which makes sense. This time it seemed like she gave him a lot more physical attention rather yes. than just the treats. Mm -hmm. And right when they got in the space actually yeah. too, which was really smart. He's a puppy, so. <laughs> I think yeah. he knows he's cute. He knows <laughs> that for sure. sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then our Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn, it was name recognition. I think he just has to get over his distractions a little bit first. Yeah. Because towards the end, he was doing a great job. He's a Siberian Husky. <laughs> they, he wants to go. They, they just mm -hmm. want to go, and they're so independent. And mm -hmm. I think Ashley was doing so great. But I also like that she did keep it simple, knowing mm -hmm. the kind of dog that he is. Mm -hmm. She kept it really simple. And that's a testament to her being an attentive dog handler, too. I think they did a good job, though, overall. Yeah, I agree. It's another good round. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for. Round three, the underdog agility course. The agility course features four different obstacles. The tunnel, the single jump, the double jump, and the pause box. Each competitor will get to lead their puppy around the course and will receive their scores from the judges at the very end. All right, starting off our final agility round, we have Julia and Piper. Take it away, you guys. Pipe. Ready? Jump. Here. Hop. Piper. Hop. Come on. Jump. Piper. Hey. Pipe. Piper. Come here. Come here. Jump. Jump. Tunnel. 
Good job, kid. <gasps> Come on, Piper. Jump. Come here. Hop. Good job. Come on. Jump. There you go. Jump. Pipe. <laughs> Piper. Piper. <laughs> Good girl! She loves the tunnel in agility. Um, she will go in the tunnel by herself. She doesn't care. That's probably her favorite thing. Um, I think the hurdles are a little bit hard for her, um, but I'm happy that she did it. She had a little bit of a mishap. She is a little distracted as she gets usually, but she powered through it and got through it. So that's all I can ask from her. All right, now we have Giselle and Jack. Take it away, you two. All right, ready? All right, jump. Okay, sit. Sit. Good job. Okay, ready? Come on. All right, jump. Nope. Oh, come here. Come here. My bet. Looks like treat oriented Jack is back at it again. Jump. He's having no, a little bit back. of trouble with this double hurdle though, so I'm not sure if that's gonna be hurting him or not. Ready? All right, jump. All right. It might be his his puppy his puppy senses tingling. So we do know that jump. one of his weaknesses is lacking attention. I mean for a six month old pup, what you can, can you it. expect? You can All right. Tunnel. Let's see how he does with the tunnel. <laughs> Giselle is having a little bit of difficulty getting him into the tunnel. Yeah, ready? Hopefully this will get him in. Tunnel. There we go. There he goes. <laughs> Good job. Look, got another one. All right. You gotta do one more and time. And once okay? again, Jack is showing us that he's just happy to have those treats. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay, one more time. Hey, hey. Nope. Come here. Yeah. Okay, ready? All right. Jump. Sit. Looks like he got some height on that jump. I was about to say, that little jump is absolutely adorable. Hey, come on. All right, jump. Jump. Got it again. Oh, oh, definitely. Oh, oh, oh no. He's running out the other he side. Oh, he's coming through again. There he goes. There. Definitely a much more focused round. Yeah, uh, for, in my opinion, I think he actually did pretty well. Um, I was kind of scared um, because yesterday it took him like a couple tries to actually get through the tunnel. And then by the time he got it down, he was already burnt out. But I actually was pretty impressed like how quickly and um, timely he did the course all in one shot. I hope so. I think so, actually. No, I think he is going to be the winner. I'm pretty confident he did pretty well and that he is going to be the winner. All right, and with our final competitors of the evening, here are Ashley and Brooklyn. Good luck, you guys. Brooklyn. <coughs> yeah, I know. Brooklyn's got more songs for us. Let's go. Jump. Starting off strong box. with that nice little jump. Brooklyn, look. Taking his time in the pause box. Definitely <laughs> assessing his surroundings first. He's got to give it a good sniff before. Oh, Brooklyn. he's in. Look. He's just got to sit. Oh, there, oh, there he goes. Go. Over here. Oh, he Over is here? trying to avoid no. this hurdle Over here. at all costs. <laughs> Looks Over like here. we have a little peekaboo technique there. Jump. Oh. There's the nice jump. Nice jump. jump. On to the second. Perfect. Nice as well. Brooklyn. He's checking out the tunnel. Go, go, go. And there he comes yeah. through. Brilliant job. Let's do one that was a time. nice run from Brooklyn. Over here, let's do that again. Now we have Brooklyn going on to his jump. second run. He's got that jump again, heading to box. the pause box. Sit. Oh, yeah. Nice job. sit in the pause here. box. Jump. No, 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 no. Already. A little timid with the second Over hurdle. Here, no. Oh, <laughs> trying to avoid it. Oh, moves it completely. At Over this here. point, he just Over wants here. to impress Ashley. Over here, come on. Oh, no. <laughs> Can I fix that? Or just keep going? Let's go. Brooklyn, jump. Yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. It's always that second hurdle Brooklyn, for each here. of the competitors. Look. Sorry. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Brooklyn this is more concerned with sniffing <laughs> the outside of the tunnel versus Brooklyn going inside of it. Even the sandbags, he looks like he's going to eat them. Or will this time he float over the tunnel? Oh, <laughs> oh he's oh. around the side. <laughs> it's okay. And there we go. He did really well the first time, but then box the second time. Uh, one thing wrong was that he, the second time, he didn't jump anyone else, so he kept to it. And he did 
so I keep playing as well. But you have to always do it, so I'm kind of really sad of him. Because, you know, he has really, really things to do most of the time. So seeing him actually capture it, especially the first time, he actually did everything. So it's very nice to see him do something new. Maybe he's wild. So, yeah, I'm very sad. I pretty hope that we start to take him first place to the the Pisces. And, well, uh, hopefully we get this place, if not, I think it'll be nice. And my third place, everyone will in Brooklyn, you've done a spectacular job. Now we're going to be moving on to our judges table for the final deliberation. Should we start with Julianne Piper? Sure. Mm -hmm. I think Piper was adorable because she just was super eager to go through the tunnel any chance that she got. She loved the tunnel. It was so cute though. You could tell that it was just really well reinforced. She missed the square at first, mm -hmm. um, the, the first round. And then there were two jumps, I believe. Yeah, two jumps in the first round and one jump in the second round. But other than that, she definitely was totally comfortable with the whole course. <laughs> I love that Katie. Giselle is very connected to Jack. I think she kind of continues throughout each exercise to just make sure that Jack is engaged with her. I think that's really valuable. I think he did kind of miss the pause to sit a few times, but I think um, Giselle was good at being persistent, using her voice. He just went right with it, and then at the <laughs> end with the tunnel, I mean, that was just hysterical. He just wanted to keep going through, you know? Yeah. Brooklyn looked super majestic. I just would oh, like, yeah. to, <laughs> like yes. to say that. It definitely takes some coaxing from Ashley, but like we've talked about, it's definitely a challenge of the breed that he is, and I just think she's had a world of patience. Going through the tunnel was smoother than I expected. It's a smaller tunnel for him compared to the other dogs, and that first round through the tunnel was nice and smooth. For me, um, it was a little bit too much of leash work. Mm -hmm. You know, she was using, overusing that leash. Yes. And he had a good recovery after knocking down <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> one of the jumps. And um, oh, and at the end, he skipped the tunnel at first. Remember, he wouldn't go through it. He just kept, he went around the side of it. But I do like a, <laughs> just a silly little thing on the side. Um, Ashley's outfit, the black and white, matched <laughs> oh, yes, perfectly when they were standing there. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, they look yeah, beautiful dog. Absolutely beautiful guess. dog. Yes. All right, before we hear the competitors final scores and reveal the winner of the underdog, we have some other awards to give out. Our superlatives are secondary titles awarded throughout the competition to our favorite canine competitors. Our first superlative award goes to the dog with the singing skills to pay the bills. The most likely to make it a Broadway award goes straight to Brooklyn. Congratulations, Brooklyn. Our second superlative is awarded to the pup who knows exactly how to play up the camera and never has a bad fur day. The most photogenic award goes to Piper. Congratulations, Piper. And our final superlative is dedicated to the dog who has groomed their skills the most over the course of the competition. The most improved award goes to Jack. Congratulations, Jack. Now with our two politives awarded, we'd like to quickly thank our sponsors for their support of our show. Each competitor will, will receive a gift basket with prizes and gift cards donated by three amazing local pet shops here on Long Island. Thank you to Mutts and Butts, Pick a Pup Boutique, and Pet Store Next Door for your support of our show. As an additional part of our awards to each competitor, we will also be donating to a dog organization or foundation of their choice in their name. And now it is time to find out what each of our competitors earn for the first, second, and final rounds. Julia, for the first round, uh, we gave you nine out of 10 points. Uh, excellent job. Um, for future, just use a little bit less of the, the pressure on the leash but the contact with the dog, the eye contact and everything, amazing. Giselle, we gave you eight points out of 10. So we didn't see much of the stay, so maybe work on that. Sit and spin, amazing. Ashley, we know you and Brooklyn were very nervous in the beginning, the first round, so um, we gave you six points out of 10, um, but beautiful work, keep going. So for round two, for Julia and Piper, we gave you guys an eight out of 10. 
Um, Peekaboo was super unique and fun. She was really enthusiastic to perform the cue, so we think you did a great job overall. Maybe cleaning it up a little bit, making sure to get her engagement once she comes through the legs. That way she stays in tune with you. For Giselle and Jack for round two, we went with nine out of 10. Rollover and spin were both adorable. That was a really kind of positive aspect of what we took away from it was that you two were really connected and they were also unique and challenging cues. Rollover is pretty multifaceted, so we liked to see that used. Um, and then for Ashley and Brooklyn, we went with seven out of 10. Recall and name recognition are good skills. It's a little bit simpler than the other skills, but we also really appreciated that you kept your expectations realistic, that you chose to go with something that you knew that he could execute well in the setting. So we thought that went, we thought that went really well. All right, and for round three, the agility course, um, Julia, for you and Piper, we gave an eight out of 10. Um, you have great control over Piper. She seems to love what she's doing with you. There was just a couple of things with the um, jumps and the square was a little hesitation in, in the beginning. Overall, great job. And for Giselle and Jack, we gave you a nine out of 10. Awesome job for such a young pup. Jack just looks like he's having a blast at all times. Cute little hop skip into the thing <laughs> and then had a blast in the tunnel. So yeah, nine out of 10. Ashley in Brooklyn, we gave you an eight out of 10. Fantastic job with Brooklyn. He did the jumps great. He went right in the square, sat down. Good job with the tunnel. There was just a couple of, he knocked over a <laughs> thing, but great job. All right, thank you so much to our judges once again. Now let's start with our third place finisher. With a final score of 21, we have Ashley and Brooklyn. Congratulations, you guys. Great job to Brooklyn. And now it's time for the moment that we've all been waiting for. This will determine who walks away with the grand prize and the title of the underdog. We can even hear Brooklyn singing in place. Our second place finisher with 25 points is Julia and Piper. Wonderful, congratulations to you too. And that means with a final combined score of 26, the winner of the underdog is Giselle and Jack. Congratulations to the two of you both. You guys are the underdog. So how do you feel? And tell us a little bit about the organization you will be donating to as well. Uh, I feel pretty uh, pretty uh, happy, I would say, <laughs> um, especially because Jack's five months old, so I'm actually pretty impressed um, how far he's gotten with uh, with the show, so I will say that. And I'll also be donating to Bobby and the Strays on Long Island in New York. Thank you so much to everyone who supported the show throughout its production, including our donators and our sponsors. Please check out all of the amazing organizations and foundations highlighted throughout our show. Thank you all for watching. This has been The Underdog. Have a good night.